Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Q&A session for the 100,000 subscribers that I promised to do. Just quickly, a few announcements. There is now a subreddit uh, just called Hand Tool Rescue on reddit.com, so you can go there if you'd like to talk to me and others about your restorations, and you can do the exact same thing on the newly formed and to rescue Facebook group, so you can head over there, show off what you're working on, and I'll be there to discuss and help out, uh, along with tons of other people. There already seem to be a bunch of posts there, so uh, it's turning into, hopefully, the community that I hope it turns into. Let's just dive into the questions. I'm gonna answer as many as I can from the top uh, voted comments on the video and I'll just go through them and kind of give you my honest answer on each and every one. I couldn't answer every single question. There were over 1,500 uh, comments and questions so that's just insane. I'm just gonna keep it to you know 20 questions around there. So first off, am I Ray Romano or Seth Rogen? I can't tell you. Where do I get all the tools? They are from fairly obvious sources, nothing super secret for the most part. Your number one in terms of variety would be eBay, but that's at the highest possible pricing uh, for finding tools. Uh, eBay is a fine source, but if you're really kind of looking to get a deal, you're going to want to go to just classified ads such as Craigslist or Kijiji here in Canada. Those have more local options uh, at more reasonable prices for antique or vintage tools. There are also lots of Facebook groups. Um, they are usually fairly specialized and the people on there are very knowledgeable and if you're looking for something specific they could probably help you track it down uh, but of course shipping is always an issue depending on uh, your location another great source is of course antique shops you can go and have a look and see what the condition is which is very nice it's much better than just buying something off the internet and you can kind of barter a little bit on the price and try to get something knocked down. For the very specialized stuff uh, that is usually very rare, you will have to try and track down somebody who knows somebody that might have one uh, and try to convince them to sell it to you. It is, it is tough. Uh, if you really want to go far into getting the best possible deal, you can track down former employees of the companies of the tools that they make. So that's another route. It sometimes leads to amazing things, but just cold calling people is not usually very successful. What do I do with all the tools once they are restored? I burn them. I just burn them. Just, what else would I do with them? I actually do keep uh, most of what I have restored. The stuff I haven't kept, I've sold a very small amount, some of the hand planes essentially, and I've given away a bunch of stuff to other YouTubers. I return the favor to Jimmy for giving me the drill, the gas powered drill, by giving him the uh, rotary jigsaw or cut all. And the 1950s belt sander is in AVE's hands. Uh, he'll get to that at some point, probably. But uh, that also answers the question why I didn't replace the power cord and any of the electrical on that. Uh, restoration for that tool because I needed to keep it complete for him to go and uh, annihilate it to see what it's like inside. 
I do plan on eventually selling more of them. I, I just don't have the room to keep all these tools. It's just, it's too much. So look for that on the website when that goes live sometime next year. So next question, what was the tool that started it all for you? Well, it was a tool much like this one. Um, this was, or this is a Stanley four and a half. I got it locally for 20 bucks and I just started messing around with it, trying to clean it up and got bit by the restoration bug, I'd say, and just kind of tried to find more and more of these hand planes. And it was really kind of hand planes and other woodworking hand tools that got me started. Um, this one isn't the specific one, but these are the English hand planes, or Stanley four and a halfs. These to me are the ultimate in four and a halfs. Their casting is much thicker. They're also much wider than the normal USA made four and a halfs. So for whatever reason, these haven't gone up in price yet, but these are one of my favorite types of hand planes. Okay, so what is the difference between a rescue and a restoration? Um, this can be complicated to answer on a technical and kind of philosophical level in the sense that you can never truly restore something back to its original condition just because if you get down to the level of atoms, I'm not placing the atoms exactly back where they were. So on a technicality, nothing can actually be restored, but most people are talking about a visual or functional restoration or both. Uh, and for me, essentially just a cleaning with uh, no painting or anything like that would be more of a rescue and a full tear down with painting and cleaning and sanding and replacement of um, stickers and anything else that came off that would to me would be more of a, a restoration. How old are your most favorite types of tools? Um, I would have to say that I really like I guess the stuff from the 1850s to the 1940s would be my cool era of, of stuff. The 1850s to 1900 stuff is usually interesting just because it's always or usually all metal or a little bit of wood in there. Uh, when you get into the 40s they start throwing in uh, different materials, sometimes things like plastic or bakelite, uh, and it's less exciting to me for whatever reason. What is my favorite restoration? Um, I guess it wasn't really a restoration, but the favorite tool of mine currently would still be the gas-powered circular saw. They are super cool, and I try to use it whenever I have the opportunity to. It's just so ridiculous. And the oldest tool I ever uh, took care of. Um, the oldest I have personally around are probably just some hand planes from the 1870s. It's not necessarily massively old, but uh, I do have some and they're around. Some of the wooden planes that you'll come across at an antique shop for $5 could be a hundred years older than that. Uh, but I don't usually go for the wooden planes myself. What was the most challenging restoration project? Um, in terms of pure frustration, the gas-powered drill drove me up the wall uh, in the sense that I couldn't get it to run for a very long time. And I still am not 100% sure why. I've been in talks with people who are more experts on those types of engines and it might just be that the cylinder which actually screws 
into the main casting. Uh, could be screwed a little too much or not enough and the position is kind of off, reducing the compression and therefore reducing the uh, run capacity on that drill. I'm not fully sure yet, but I will fix that hopefully at some point. Do I have a preference for the types of tools I restore? No, not necessarily. I started with woodworking tools and I've done a lot of it uh, to the point where it's it's less exciting as uh, just something different. So getting into some of the uh, blacksmithing tools or anything kind of gas powered has been a lot of fun just, just to go through. Can we help you buy you a new sweater? Um, no. How dare you offend the glorious root sweater? Look at this patina. It's just, it's too good. I, I, I can't, I can't give it up until it kills itself. That's just the way it is. What is my least favorite restoration so far? Um, in terms of execution, I don't think I nailed the gas powered drill, or at least I didn't convey well enough why I made it look used instead of all nice and pristine. Uh, so that was somewhat of a fail on my part. But in terms of a quality of a tool, the Power Hacks uh, recently was uh, probably the first tool I've done that's not nicely made. So that was somewhat disappointing. Once you get into it and take it apart, you only then find out, you know, the kind of quality it is. Has there been any encounter off camera involving injury or bizarre accidents with any of the tools? No. Um, I am fairly safe, at least I try to be, regardless of, um, you know, my sandals in the workshop sometimes, but that's usually when I'm just doing something with my hands, not using a power tool. But, um, I don't plan on getting injured, but there are tools coming up that, as usual, can significantly injure somebody. Most of the old tools did not think about safety in their design, so hopefully I don't die. Do you think you could do a basic restoration video on simple hand tools like screwdrivers or hammers. Definitely, I plan on doing that uh, specifically to these types of screwdrivers. Uh, these are called perfect handle screwdrivers. They, to me, really are perfectly handled. They are awesome. Um, the wood inlay and the kind of metal uh, hammer spot here if you ever really needed it, but the wooden inlay really allows you to grip it no matter how much grease you have on your hands. It's not like plastic at all. I have a set of these without any wood uh, and they kind of need to be fixed up. They have nice square shanks which are awesome for getting a wrench around and just torquing as needed to get stuff out. Do I have any larger projects lined up? Yes. Of course. Uh, if you have not seen the little announcement about the drag saw, that will be a a very large project for me, probably over the course of, of multiple videos, just because I'll have to restore the engine as well as the saw and the frame as well, so they all need to kind of get fixed up in order. That one should be coming in the summer as I don't really want to try to run a full cast iron machine when it's minus 40 outside. So I don't want to risk that damage. But bigger stuff like that is coming and it is part of the kind of natural evolution of the channel. If there's enough support to kind of purchase and restore those kinds of larger, essentially shop tools. Can we get a proper workshop tour? Yes, um, but not now. I plan 
on upgrading the workshop. So before I do that, I can give you a little tour. But uh, as you can probably see from behind in the background of videos, it's a giant disaster with massive safety concerns. So I will have to clean it up a little bit. Would it be possible for you to do a restoration from a tool from Norway? Uh, you can send me any tool you'd want for me to restore. I would really love to find more uh, non-North American tools or English tools, just because those are kind of very plentiful and uh, I have seen them. I would just love to see some countries represented and other tools that I've just never come across ever. So it would be really neat if you do have a tool that is super interesting and I probably never heard of it, although you wouldn't know that, just email me and I'd love to have a look. What am I really wanting to restore? I would love to restore a benchtop metal planer. Uh, you can look them up. One of the companies I made them was Federal and they're just called a federal bench metal planer or federal metal planer. They're not massive. They're maybe three feet long and a foot and a half wide, two feet wide. And I think it would be super interesting and actually useful for some restorations. One day I'm sure I will find them. I just know they're, they're thousands of dollars. So maybe one day. How do I keep track of all the nuts and bolts? Uh, I don't really, the camera does. The reason I kind of started the YouTube channel was that I was getting into more complicated restorations in terms of number of parts and I needed to record where everything went. And yes, you can take a photo of the screws and where they went but to me, it was just easier to film it so that I, I can see myself taking out the exact screw and I know which screw it is. So that was just kind of one reason to start the channel. Uh, but the other reason is just that while I was finding all of these old tools, there really is a low amount of information on these things online. There's a lot of information on them from people, but you'd have to find those people. And it's hard to find the people because they're not displaying that they have any knowledge about whatever tool it might be. So the channel is, to me, a way of kind of archiving all of these tools just so they're not lost forever. The patent documents are really all that we have for sure, but it's nice to have a video breakdown of all of these tools in case somebody else wants to attempt to restore or even just see what these tools were built like or really anything like that. So it's, it's more education than anything, but I, I do enjoy the entire process. Do I do anything else other than restoration projects? The restorations have definitely taken up a majority of my time, but before I was doing that, I did a lot of woodworking. I still have all those tools and the table saw and the jointer and the planer, uh, and I still do make things when I have the time out of wood, but I am planning to get into basically as much as I can blacksmithing for sure, just because I have all the stuff, including a power hammer. Uh, but that was just uh, a purchase that had to be done at the time because I do plan on, on getting into more blacksmithing. And there will be tons of other things I will probably need to get into as the channel grows. What is your standard workbench build? Uh, this is a very simple workbench. It's just glued together strips of pine or spruce in this case. I have a lot of spruce where I am. Uh, and to me, it's the ultimate choice in terms of wood. Uh, 
Uh, I need something very soft, as soft as possible, just so I'm not denting whatever I'm working on. And wood is nice because it's always kind of grippy and not massively slippery. Yes, it's harder to clean, but uh, it hasn't really been a massive issue. The only issue I do come across with wood, at least a bench that I've used like this, is this has soaked up an insane amount of oil and chemicals to the point where it would probably explode if I lit it on fire. Uh, it also doesn't help if I don't have something in between a barrier in between um, a piece of metal that needs to be painted. If I just put it on here it would immediately have oil and dirt on it. So this bench is strictly for you know dismantling hammering, punching, knocking, whatever you need to do, and then when I go to paint or do whatever, after sandblasting, I'll put down a nice blanket or something, and you've, you've seen me do something like that. How did I start my workshop? Uh, I just started essentially searching online as much as I could for the types of tools I needed at the time, and that, and those were just woodworking tools, very simple, basic woodworking tools. And then, as I found that I needed to buy more tools, you needed money to buy those tools. So I decided to start flipping uh, woodworking tools in terms of cleaning them up and then selling them for a profit, a very minimal profit, and not really worth my time, technically, but it did allow me to get the money I needed to buy the tools. And on top of that, the biggest contributor to building up my workshop has been um, chainsaw milling and bandsaw milling now currently. So the chainsaw milling, when I first got into it for a relatively low price compared to ba uh, buying a massive bandsaw, uh, I was able to slice up trees into nice slabs, dry them, nicely and then sell them for a, a larger profit than it would be just flipping um, tools. And that allowed me to purchase tons of stuff for my workshop, essentially whatever I needed to a, a limited degree. And eventually I had enough to buy a bandsaw mill and I can now cut, you know, full logs way faster with way less effort and still dry them and sell them as I need to purchase and fund um, my workshop. So I do recommend if anybody wants to find a, a source of money for somewhat limited effort for the amount of money you get, it, it's decent and it's usually pretty available since uh, trees that come down need to be thrown out and if you're there to pick them up, Instead of them having to throw them out, they'll be more than glad to give you a log for free, in most cases. Uh, so that is a way to, to fund your workshop. If you have any other questions about the chainsaw milling or bandsaw milling and wood drying, uh, you can ask me below. And finally, I just want to say thank you all again for subscribing. Uh, thank you to the patrons who have continued to support me. It is incredibly valuable and hopefully we can get more of you to the point where we can purchase the bigger, cooler tools like the benchtop planer and even a snow plane. If you look on my Instagram, there's a snow plane locally from the 40s and I would love, love to get in to restoring that snow plane, but it is thousands of dollars. So maybe one day, maybe you'll still be up in years from now, I'm not sure. But uh, just thank you all for your support, and I will see you in the next one. Later.